Sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder that causes red blood cells to become misshapen, decreasing blood flow and preventing oxygen flow to the body's tissues. This disease disproportionately impacts the black community, and a single patient with sickle cell disease can require thousands of blood transfusions throughout their lifetime. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has compounded the challenges for patients with sickle cell disease as they face new concerns around availability of care and access to needed blood products for their treatment. Hello, my name is Atiyah Leach, and I'm the Sickle Cell Program Manager at the American Red Cross. Joining me to discuss sickle cell disease and the impact of COVID-19 is Dr. Nadira Elami, a pediatric hematologist and oncologist at Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU. Hi, Dr. Elami, how are you today? I'm doing great, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for joining us, I appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely. So according to some studies, someone living with sickle cell disease may visit the ER about three times a year. And we know each patient's different can be more frequent or less frequent than that. Are patients with sickle cell disease more susceptible to COVID-19 or more at risk for severe symptoms? So there's still a lot of data that we need to get to kind of understand the impact of COVID-19 on patients with sickle cell disease. We certainly do know that patients with sickle cell disease um, have complications with their lungs and things like that that could possibly predispose them to having a, a harder uh, course with COVID-19. Okay, that makes sense. So um, even with that, there can be a lot of anxiety related to seeking medical care during this time. And I can imagine even um, with sickle cell patients, I'm um, going to a, a crowded emergency room, lots of people, lots of things going on. Um, at what point do doctors recommend seeking emergency medical care as it relates to someone experiencing COVID-like symptoms? We want our patients to always be in touch with us if they feel that they are experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. I think we've kind of gotten far enough into this pandemic that we are um, a lot of times able to triage patients uh, over the phone without them directly coming in. Um, but if patients are experiencing symptoms like shortness of breath or excruciating pain, difficulty breathing, uh, things like that, then we absolutely want them to come in to be evaluated for COVID-19 symptoms. Great, even for sickle cell patients, that's great. So for patients with sickle cell disease, uh, what are some of the dangers of kind of waiting too late to seek emergency medical care? So we want our patients to seek medical care once they start feeling uncomfortable with the symptoms that they're having. Um, a lot of these patients are familiar with the symptoms of their sickle cell disease, and so they know their bodies the best. And if they feel like they're experiencing symptoms that are not typical for their sickle cell disease or worse than they're used to experiencing, then we want them to call us so that we can help troubleshoot them, and direct them to the right place to seek care. That makes sense. So what are some of the dangers of waiting too late to get that emergency medical care? So one of the complications that we worry about the most is respiratory failure. So, you know, if a patient waits too late at home and waits for things to progress too far, then by the time they decide to seek medical care, the concern is that we won't have enough interventions to kind of bring them back to a better place. Um, and it's not only just COVID-19 symptoms, but also we know that any kind of illness can precipitate a vasoocclusive crisis and waiting too late at home um, kind of forces patients into a worse situation and makes it harder for them to get the care that they need and um, recover as quickly as they could if they had sought care earlier. Yeah, it sounds like waiting could be dangerous in many situations. Um, so when patients with sickle cell disease come, especially in the emergency room, um, they're getting some type of blood transfusions related on kind of what they're there for. Has there been any impact on donated blood or blood shortages since the beginning of COVID-19? Absolutely. There have been um, a large amount of blood shortages um, with COVID-19, um, and it has had a huge impact on our patients with sickle cell disease. I remember early in the, the pandemic, patients who were on the chronic transfusion protocols were not able to get the blood they needed in the time that they needed it because of the blood shortage, which of course is dangerous for these patients who are at risk for stroke and things like that. Um, so there have been, uh, you know, situations where we've had to stretch care a little bit because of the, the blood shortages that we're seeing. So we absolutely want to encourage people, you know, 
even during this pandemic time to make sure that they're they're donating blood because there are patients like our sickle cell patients who really rely heavily on those blood transfusions for management of their disease. Yeah, that, that's a great point. So this disease affects one out of every 365 African-American babies born in this country. Um, when it comes to donating blood, like you mentioned, can you talk about the importance of having a diverse blood donor base? Absolutely. So I think when people think about donating blood um, and matching blood, we tend to think of making sure that we match blood on blood types. And that is absolutely important. But there are also a lot of um, hundreds of proteins associated with, with blood cells. And a lot of these proteins are um, unique to certain racial and ethnic groups. And African-American people and people of African, uh, African descent do have some special unique proteins um, that is associated with their, with their red blood cells. And so it's absolutely important in order to prevent um, any kind of rejection of donated blood that we're able to match those patients well. And the best possible chance of matching is often by having donors who are um, similar in racial and ethnic background. Okay, so you said, uh, you mentioned uh, rejection of blood transfusion, if possibly that most compatible match is not found. What happens to someone with sickle cell disease when they start to refuse or um, reject a transfusion? So there are a variety of uh, types of reactions that can develop. Um, some of them are simpler, like a fever, some uh, more serious, like an allergic reaction. And one of the most uh, severe complications is what we call a hemolytic reaction. Um, and that can lead to kidney failure, it can lead to lung damage, um, and it can be very dangerous for the patient. And so we want to avoid, you know, that happening by making sure that we are matching these patients as extensively as we can. Thank you. That, that sounds serious as well. So we talk about sickle cell disease, um, but there's also something called sickle cell trait. And sometimes there could be some confusion between the two. Can you explain the difference between sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait? So when you have trait, that means that you carry the genetic material for the disease, but you don't actually have the disease. So when we talk about patients who have sickle cell disease, we know that they inherited the tr one trait from their mother and one trait from their father. And patients who have sickle cell trait, they've inherited the trait from one of their parents and then they've inherited a normal gene from their other parents. So they have the genetic material, but they don't actually have the disease. Thank you for clarifying that. So it wasn't until 2006 where states started requiring um, universal newborn screening for sickle cell. Um, despite a national recommendation of it in 1987. Um, how important is it for individuals born before 2006 to take advantage of sickle cell trait screening? It is absolutely um, important for these patients to take advantage of any opportunity they have to get tested for sickle cell trait. Um, I think it's very important for people to know for themselves um, whether or not they have sickle cell trait and also for family planning in the future. Um, they, you know, to be able to meet with a genetic counselor and talk about the risk of having a child with sickle cell disease if they happen to have a child with someone who also has sickle cell trait. So I think it's absolutely important for that reason. And then also as we are learning more about sickle cell trait, we do know that there are some complications that can happen very rarely in patients who have sickle cell trait. And so in, if we are able to identify those patients that do have that trait, then we can educate them about the things that they should look out for in the future. That's perfect. So at the American Red Cross, um, we do offer sickle cell trait screening options for self-identified African Americans with their blood donation. Do you have any other options for those looking to get um, screened for the sickle cell trait? Yeah, actually the test for sickle cell trait is a pretty um, simple test, a simple blood test. So you should be able to go to any doctor that you have, a primary care doctor, internal medicine, a, pedi a pediatrician, um, to get this blood testing done, the health department. You know, there are a variety of, of places that you can go in order to get this testing. So these are good options to um, get screened for the sickle cell trait. Whether someone gets screened or not, can someone with the sickle cell trait still donate blood? Yes, a patient with sickle cell trait can still donate blood, and we absolutely encourage patients with sickle cell disease to donate if they choose to. Um, but it is important to know that patients with sickle cell trait, um, we would not give that blood to a person who has sickle cell disease. 
yeah, I understand there could be um, some type of complications when that does happen. Speaking of other complications or side effects of blood transfusions, are there any other things that providers, donors, and even patients should be mindful of, like iron overload or um, any complications with receiving too many transfusions over time? Absolutely. So two of the big things that we worry about with patients who receive a lot of blood transfusions are one, developing an antibody um, to blood. And that makes it a lot more difficult for um, us to be able to match patients and give them blood transfusions. Um, and the more antibodies they develop, the harder it becomes for them to actually receive blood and the harder it is for us to find appropriate donors. So that's why we always stress the importance of matching as much as possible for these patients who are getting um, frequent blood transfusions. The other complication, as you mentioned, is iron overload. Um, you know, every time a patient gets a transfusion, they are getting a very large amount of iron as well. And because our body is not able to get rid of iron very well on its own, over time, that iron can build up in the body and cause significant heart damage and liver damage. Um, and so for a lot of our patients who are on chronic transfusion protocols, we do end up having to give them special medications to help them um, take care of that overload that they develop as a result. So thank you, Dr. Elamine, um, for spending time to talk with me today about um, COVID impact on sickle cell patients and the related care associated with sickle cell disease. It's been super helpful. The Red Cross currently provides free sickle cell trait screening on all donations from self-identified African-American donors. To learn more about your eligibility to donate blood, visit redcrossblood.org and click on the eligibility tab. To schedule an appointment to give blood or even host a blood drive, visit redcrossblood.org forward slash our blood. To learn more about Dr. Elamine and the work she and her colleagues are doing to support patients with sickle cell disease through the sickle cell program at VCU, visit vcuhealth.org. Thank you for watching.